Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so as I was saying, let us assume that NumPy has been installed, right? So once NumPy has been installed, I've told you to install NumPy, in case you are working on a different system and you don't want to use Anaconda because Anaconda is not the only one that you use, right? Uh, so I'm going to say installing NumPy. The same thing to pandas. You just change numpy to pandas. You just change numpy to pandas, right? So, in case you want to use, there's another. You can use Visual Studio Code. You know what we call Visual Studio Code, right? Python uh, code. You can just go to code dot Visual Studio. Yeah, here. So you can also use Visual Studio Code. Right, Python. Right. So, if you want to, uh, you can you can install all. That's why you have to install those things to cover it. So, but let us assume that you've installed NumPy because you have a uh, Anaconda, right? So, you want to check uh, your NumPy version. You can just say print. So, to check your NumPy version. Right. Uh, okay. To check. Right. To check your numpy version. Right. So I'm just gonna say. So basically, what do you do to that? Is basically you've got to import numpy because. If you install it, you will need to use NumPy. Remember, you have to import it. So you say import NumPy, and then to everything you import, you can create alias for them so that you just use that short version, short alias that you create for them. For example, if you say import NumPy, you have to be using this NumPy. But if I say import NumPy as MP, I'm, I don't need to use NumPy anymore. I'm just going to be using MP. Are you with me? So once you import NumPy as MP, right? I don't need to be using NumPy anymore. I'm just going to be using uh, uh, MP. Are you with me? So I'm just going to be using N MP. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Okay, so as we as we walk along that, now you can decide to run this cell, each cell, you can decide to write all the code. Now to, to, to check NumPy version, all you've got to do is to say print np dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore. And once you do this, Gonna print it for you, right? So uh, we don't know. We want to check uh, numpy numpy.org just to check the current version of numpy. Uh, basically, so this is basically where you can get documentation about numpy, right? So uh, you can see the same thing that I ask you to do. And uh, I just want to check if we, uh, the current version of NumPy, uh, let me see from the documentation, is basically 1.2.3. That's the current version, as you can see, 1.23, right? And I think we are using, I'm using 1.20.3, right? So if I try to see, let me try to run this. I'm just gonna comment this. Uh, let's see whether it will install the latest one. It is, uh, what does it say? It is invalid syntax. No, it shouldn't be. Uh, when we come here, I wanna see whether I'm writing using the, yeah, conda install number. 
So I'm gonna try this. We still give it a valid syntax. I'm gonna leave conda alone, and then we're gonna use pip. Let's try pip. Why is it saying L? That's the same thing I was getting to. This is the same thing you were getting. Yes, that's L. Okay, now it's fine. I'm gonna let's come to Anaconda prompt. And I'm gonna say Anaconda install numpy. Yeah, it's installing it there and it's the same thing that we're using, but it's fine. So you can use that. Let's see whether it's going to install the latest one. Okay, so it says, aha, that's what I want. It says the volume package will be downloaded. Conda blah, 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 the Python, this, this is the following package we updated, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna proceed, let's proceed if you do the same thing. So I'm just gonna, oh, since preparing transaction done, the current user does not have right permission to the target environment. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do on my side. So I'm just gonna come here again. When you get that kind of error, when you see Anaconda, so I'm gonna right click this and I'm gonna say run as administrator. And I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna try again. Let's say conda install number. Right? So it should be able to. Are you guys following? Yes. Yeah. So if you get the same error, you might not get the same error as me, but if you get the same error, just right click and say run at administrator. I think that should be that should be fine. So let me say yes. You see that is 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 installing. That's fine. It's been done now, right? So uh, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to restart my Jupiter, my Jupiter server, this, right? So I'm going to restart that. I'm going to close it, right? I'm we're going to get an error. It's fine on this that you see. So I'm going to start the Jupiter server again, right? So let us start the Jupyter server again. Uh, Jupyter, right? So, okay. Okay, so that has been started and it started this. I can come back to this and just to refresh. All right, so everything is fine. I don't have to install it here again. Then uh, these, these are some of the things that we normally find. I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna come here again, open this right that we started. So everything then is fine. So I don't we don't need this anymore because it's it's giving us some some things that and I think it is giving us this because of all this I put there. That's why it's not working. But now let's come here. I want to install this and I want to check the version. Uh it's still running, so might not be unconnected to. So I have to restart my Jupyter from the beginning, right? I have to restart, or I'm going to stop this. Yeah, it's still running, so I'm going to leave the page. I'm going to stop this, and I'm going to start my Jupyter again. Uh, I'm going to start it again. Then I will say Jupiter. So let's see if everything is going to be fine. Moving forward. So and I'm, we're going to come here, right? We're going to come here, uh, right? And then I'm going to, we are here. So I'm going to start this from the onset, right? I'm going to run this. Yours might not be doing what mine is doing. So try it. Mine is doing this, and sometimes 
I just have to restart my computer. So that's basically what is going to happen. Uh, so please bear with me. Uh, stay on, on the Zoom. I'm going to restart the computer. And just, just stay on the Zoom. I'm going to restart the computer because once you start getting this, it's because of the, if you have the same thing, you can also restart your computer. So I'm just going to restart my computer quickly. Uh, I'll join you back in the next two, three minutes. Doctor Tho. Hi, Doctor. <laughs> you, remember you're alive. Huh? Oh, it's true. Thanks.
Okay, guys, um, I'm back. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, let's see if everything is fine. I'm gonna share my screen now. Okay, so I'm um, going to be uh, here. Okay. Okay, so I want to believe everything is fine now, right? Uh, so can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, so here, uh, let's run this. Yeah, everything is fine. Now let's create the version. Okay, so we're still using this version, but that's fine. Uh, that's not a problem for us. So let's just continue with that. All right. So uh, let's say that's how to check the version anyway. Okay. Now, NumPy, like I said, so remember, as I said, NumPy has. Uh, so I'm going to do, let me first do NumPy basics, right? NumPy, uh, I'm going to make this a markdown. So I'm going to call this num, NumPy, right? Basics, some of the things that you need to know. So I'm going to create a table. Uh, there's a way you create a table in 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 Jupiter using under the markdown, right? So I'm going to create a table. Uh, you're going to use the pipe pipe. This is the pipe uh, key. I'm going to say operator, the operator that NumPy use. I'm going to use pipe again, and I'm going to say uh, the description, right? I'm going to use pipe again. Right. This is a table heading, right? So this is a table heading. It has nothing to do with the, whatever I'm putting there, everything uh, on, on top, right? So here, uh, we're just gonna be copying and paste. If I, if I need to do anything, I'm gonna put another operator here. You see what I'm doing? I'm gonna do this. Uh, I'm going to do this. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm just trying to. Uh, so I'm going to then say again another part. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to say one, two, three, four again, and I'm going to say another part. Now, we're creating a table. If you look at this, this is this is not code. This note, this is just markdown, just to design what what we're doing. If we look at this, you realize that these and these are not aligned, and these and these. But once we run the table, everything is going to be fine. What I did with this is to put a line underneath this. Let me run it. You see, that's what I did. Right, just to put a line, just to underline it. Right, okay. So if I come here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing, operator, and I'm going to say, I'm just going to say two star. Right, and I'm going to put this in code. Uh, I think I'm using international, so let me change to South Africa. So I'm going to say this, right, double code. Right, and I'm going to say uh, MP dot array. So we have MP array, right? So I'm going to say in here, uh, if I put this one comma two comma three, right? And I end this, and I also end this, and I put this star here also uh, at the back of this, and I say. Please, if you get an error here, you don't need to tell me. I'm still going to give you the code. 
this is just a table, it's not a code. So I'm not gonna be uh, wasting too much time here, but if you follow me appropriately, you understand that this is done. So I'm gonna say here, then I'm gonna come here, right? So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say uh, another again, just uh, and I'll say, this is just an example of one B array, right? And I'll say again, star star, right? And I'll come here and I'll put this. If you run this, see what happened. That's what I've just done. Just table that I've just done. Now, I'm, I'm just gonna copy this. Instead of us wasting time to do that, I'm just gonna copy this. I'm going to say Control C, right? And I will come down and I'll put this there. And I will come here and I'll say, uh, no, not there. It must be inside here, right? And I'll say, comma, and I'll say uh, again here. I'll say this and I'll say 4, comma, 5, comma, 6. And I'm going to say this is an example of QD, QD array. All right? That's just the basic, right? <laughs> and I'll say, somebody saying something. No, 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 sir. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to then copy this again, right? Uh, not to waste our time because it's the same thing. That's why I said we'll do, be doing copy and paste. Here, I'm going to say there's what to call a range. A range, right? MP dot A range. So, is what you call here. Yeah, I'm going to say with A range is what you call start. I'm going to explain some of these things as we move along. Start, stop, and step. Remember, we did something like this in range. Do you still remember? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's the same thing. You, I just remember now that we actually did something like this. So we call this range, range of, we call it range array, right? So if you run this, this is just a table that I did, you can see. So uh, that's just basically uh, a, a table that I did. So meanwhile, this basically, uh, I, I think there might be something I'm missing here in this table. I want to find out what it is that I'm missing. MP, I think there shouldn't be space here. There shouldn't be space here. There shouldn't be space here. I want to find out. Yeah, let's try it. Yeah, so this, you can see those stars have gone. There's still something more that uh, I may have missed. I want to see what it is that I may have missed. Okay, I think instead of me using this, I think I'm supposed to use this, yes. So it's supposed to be this, not uh, not that. No, not the, the like your keyboard. I'm gonna bring the on screen on screen keyboard, right? On screen keyboard. This is the one I'm using. This one. You see my on screen keyboard, guys? Yes. This is the one I'm using. This one. Okay. Not this one. I used okay. this before. That was a mistake I made that I made. So you're gonna use this. This. You see where my pointer is? Yes. Huh? Yes. Okay, that's the one you are going to use here. That's why we're getting that. Uh, that's why that, that thing is coming out. So you're going to use this and you use it here as well. The same thing here. Um, I'll give you time. I'll give you chance now. The same thing here and the same thing here. Right. Now let me try and run it. Yeah, everything is fine. Uh, everything is fine. Okay, uh, go ahead. Wait. 
to the fellow. Oh, thank you, sir. I wanted to ask, especially after getting an error, like I see my cells having some weird numbering, like we find maybe a four coming before uh, a two, or like the numbers would be like um, mixed around. What causes that? And okay, so like I said, is it something? Um, it's like I said, this is not coding. So I'm not gonna, I don't think it's, it's appropriate to waste time dealing with that. Okay. Right. Yeah, this is just, a, this is just, a, a, just more of designing, commenting and all those things. So that's why I said, you either follow what I'm doing here, check what I, out the way I did it, right? Or wait, you can leave that, is not important. This is not important. I'm just using this to explain. Okay. okay. I, not normally have to you get what I mean. So basically, uh, I'm going to I'm still going to put this code in the repository, right? After the class, you can look at how I did this later. Does that make sense? Right. No, um, yeah. it was okay, but I uh, maybe I'll ask after class because I also noticed when I was doing the assignment the numbering of my cells kept. My roles oh, actually. You're talking about the numbering of the cells. Yes, it. I don't know what to use that, especially after getting an error in whatever that I'm doing. Yeah, having. again, and I encounter. Okay. Forget about that. Do not worry too much about the aesthetic of your system. Worry about your okay. code. I'm more interested in the code. You know what I mean. So this thing right. can sometimes do numbering randomly. I also haven't even bothered to find out why. You oh, understand? okay. Yeah, yeah so, because you know, when you're still learning, you're trying to see like if there's yeah, a logic so, maybe that you whatever, If you are talking about this numbering, yeah, this one, right? Yes, those ones. Mm. Yeah, forget about it. It does do not worry. Worry about the code you write inside the cell. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, if I were you, I'm going to worry too much about the code that I write inside the cell, and and not the and not uh, uh, and not the uh, how the cell or how, how it looks because sometimes as you move along, like I told you, you're going to be using uh, you might be using Visual Studio Code. The reason why we use Jupyter is because Jupyter is uh, Jupyter is more. Uh, it's more easy, as you can see. This is Visual Studio Code. So as you move along, right? So you won't have too much problem with that. You just come here in Visual Studio Code, install all your extension and install your Python, right? Uh, once Python is, so you can install all those. You can uh, you can install Jupyter here as well to have a Jupyter. Uh, what is it called? In Visual Studio Code. That's why I'm showing you. You can see this Jupyter. See that I have, I have it installed. So uh, don't worry too much on that. Anyway, anyway. So that is that is that uh, about uh, uh, NumPy Basic, as I as I as I have told you. So basically, now there are some things that we call place order. So uh, we, I'm, I'm gonna, we call it place orders, right? Place order. Right, place orders. So I'm just gonna come here, right? I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna copy the whole of this because it's the same thing. So I just wanna use them here as well, right? So I'm gonna say, in our place order, we have what you call here, here, right? So we have what you call uh, array, right? So we have what you call uh, array dot shape, which is basically what I showed you earlier here, right? We have, so here, array, right? Array dot shape. Are you guys with me? Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah. So we have what you call array dot shape. 
what is array.shape? Array.shape, no, I'm actually working on the wrong one. I think I'm, I'm, I'm running ahead of myself. So it's what we call uh, NP, NP dot line space, right? NP dot line space, just like the A range. P dot line space just like the A range zero comma two comma nine. So if you do this right, basically what this does is that it gives you it had right an evenly evenly spaced evenly spaced values right between between in cover to array length, right, to array length. So take note, as we move along, I'm, I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to be writing this, otherwise it's going to waste our time, right? It's going to waste our time. So I'm just going to write, uh, I'm just going to say it in my mouth instead of me writing there. So we also have, uh, I think, let me, let's add, I want to board it. So I'm gonna put star star and also star star just to put it. So we also have what you call np dot zeros. Np dot zeros. So what this does is that it creates an array that is filled with zero. It creates an array, right? Creates an array. An array that is filled with zeros, just zeros. You also have uh, the same way, np dot ones, right? Dot ones, and you can have dimension. Let's say one comma two. So basically, what that does that it creates an array. Create an array, I'm just going to copy this, filled with ones. Right? Create an array that are filled with ones in your numpy. Right? We also have np.random.random. So I'm just going to copy this. Copy this, and proceed. I'm going to come down here. And I'll say np dot random 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 dot random right so you can say two comma two or I'm just gonna give it more and I'm gonna say four comma four. So basically by this it plays a random array. Right. That's basically what that does, creates random arrays, right? So we also have empty.empty. Dot empty. Do you understand what that means? By virtue of what it means, creates an empty, empty array, right? Creates an empty array. That's all, right? So it creates empty arrays. I'm gonna copy this. I'm just gonna copy this, right? Uh, we run this. So here, we're gonna create, uh, I'm gonna call this array. Array in NumPy. Remember, always take note, as I said, everything in data science is based on NumPy. So, I need to give you all this foundation so that by the time we get into the core of data science, or by the time we get into using NumPy itself, you are not going to be wondering what are we, what are we doing. That's why I'm telling you all this. Very, very important. Right? So with that, we have what we call mp.array. Here, we have array.shape. I need to make this a markdown. So here we have what you call array, right? We have array dot shape. 
When I say array, our array can be a, a, a variable that we declare as we move along, you're going to understand. So array.shape is basically, this is basically the dimension. The dimension, as I told you earlier, remember I said that earlier, the dimensions in terms of rows and columns, right? So that is what is the number of rows and what is the number of columns that we have, right? So we have what we call does okay let, let's let's do something does anybody have any csv file or excel file that you can share or oh, i should just go and look for one ross so i think i do i think i do i think i do yes share it for us anyone i just want to quickly but we're still going to get there but i just want to quickly do this does it matter how many rows uh it doesn't matter, but it will, be, it will be nice if it's more, if it has more rows, well, it doesn't matter how many rows. I just want to use it to quickly explain something to us. Okay, all right then. Yeah, you can share it by uh, maybe WhatsApp on the group, on the group, or... Or can I send it on Zoom, copy and paste it? But I don't know. Yeah, you can send it on Zoom, it's fine. Just let me know when you sent it. Okay, so we have array.shape. And we also have... So take note, when, we, when I'm saying array, I'm talking about the data set, the data. When I say array, we're talking about the data. Please take note. Let me put it here. Let me actually put it here so that when you're reading, you have an understanding of what we say. So when, when we talk about an array, what we are talking, what we are talking about is about in the real sense of it is the data set, right? Please take note. So what we're talking in the real sense of it is the data set. That is the, the vast amount of data set that we have. For instance, the, 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 the data set that you want to send to us now, right? But in the, in the event, if you don't have the data set, because I think it's getting a bit late before it comes in, I'm just going to go into one of my. Uh, uh, so let's. I'm going to come here. I'm going to look into here. I'm going to. Yeah. So I'm going to copy. I'm going to copy this. Right. I'm actually going to copy the whole of this. Right. I'm going to copy the whole of this. And I'm going to go into uh, here. I'm going to go into it and I'm going to say here, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it data sets, right? And I'm going to paste this there, right? So we have that data set and I'm going to come here. I'm going to go to drive, right? I'm going to go to drive. So I'm um, under that. I'm going to go into here, right? So I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to go into P, right? Under here, I'm going to pull the data set there so that you can, uh, there. I'm going to copy this data set there so that you can copy it. We might need it as we move along. So it's been copied there. You can download it. It's been it's been it's been copied. So you can you can just uh, uh, copy that. Okay. So we're talking about the data set, our data in the real sense. So here I say if I say learn, you remember we did this in in Python when we did the fundamentals of Python. We did this. So when I say learn, learn. Array. What are we talking about, guys? We length are of. talking about the length of the array, right? We are talking about the length of the array. If you go to your Python, uh, you realize that we did that as well. So when we say here, when we say again, array dot 
NDIM, we are talking about number of array dimension. We are talking about number of array dimension, right? So here, we are talking about the number of array, number of array dimension, right? So here, when we say uh, array dot D type, yeah, when I say array dot D type, what this is telling us is that it's talking about the data type, the data type, right? The data type of the array or of the elements of the elements, elements in the array. Remember in Python, we use type instead of D type. Please take note. That's the difference. In Python, we when we did Python, fundamentals of Python, we use type. But in, uh, in, in, in NumPy and Pandas, moving forward in data science, we use D type. Are you with me? We use D type. Now, also look at look at this. We have what to call array, right? Array dot as type. Right? What this means is that you convert it into a particular type. Are you with me? You convert convert the data into a particular type that you want. So I can say as type and I say int. That is, give me an integer version of it. That's what that type means. Are you with me? Please take note. All these are very, very important because these are some of the things that we're gonna be doing. And it's very, very important that you have an understanding of everything that we are doing here. Are you with me? So it is very, very uh, important, right? Sorry. Please, if there's anything you don't understand, let me know. And then we also have, I'm just gonna copy this. I think I have just copied before. So I'm gonna copy this. Let's copy this, control C, and let's put it here. We also have a type. We have type. Right, and then array, right? We have type, then array. So here I say type, then here you say array. So what this is telling us is that the type of the array, the type of the array, right? So, I want to do this for for pan or for numpy. If there's any of these that I would need to do for 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 pandas, right? If there's any of these that I need to do for pandas, I would have done it before before the class. Please uh, just just take note. Are you guys with me? So please just uh, take uh, note. I'm just going to give it to you because it's not coding, and I'm going to give the explanation so as not to waste our our time. So if you run this, it gives you that table. Uh, so it's more or less like I'm giving you the table and I'm going to give the description of what it is in, uh, subsequently. But I normally do it for the first time because you realize that we've wasted, I mean, we spent about, uh, which one is that? There's a, there's a mistake, array endim. Endim seems to have a mistake somewhere. I don't know where the mistake is. Oh, yeah. 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 So basically, uh, I'm just going to copy this again. And I'm going to do another one. Some of the, uh, what we call here, yeah, what we call, uh, I'm going to call this copying and sorting. Copying and 
sorting. Right, so I'm going to make this a markdown again. And then we have np.copy. So we have np, np.copy, right? It creates a copy of the array. So here it creates a copy of the array. And then we also have uh, order, echo array.copy. Yeah. Excuse me. Order equal array dot copy. What this does is that it creates a deep copy of the array, right? It's a deep copy. It's a deep copy of the array, right? And also we have array dot sort. So that is it sorts the array. You know what sort means? So it sorts the or an array. It's used to sort an array. So you can sort an array by whatever you want to sort it by. Right. We also have a array dot sort, array dot sort, and then you say axis equal whatever you want to copy. Let's say zero. Right. So it sorts the array, right? So it sorts, so it sorts uh, axis of the array, right? So there's, there's a lot of these. I think uh, uh, because of our time, I'm gonna give us uh, uh, more more of some of those things as we as we move along right i should have actually uh done them as as a, uh okay you have sent us a data set i'm going to download it i'm going to save it in i'm going to save it in uh in the drive in the so i'm going to go here I'm saving it under with pre. I'm still gonna put it under data sets. Right? And it's a CSV file. So if you look at this, it's now under data set here. This is data set that you said, A2, blah, blah, blah. Now I was talking, let me let me quickly import pandas. You can also do that because pandas has been installed as PD. And I'm gonna say, uh, let's just say uh, blue fellow uh, equal, I want to read the data set. I'm just gonna say PD. I want to read, we are, we are here to do pandas. We do pandas tomorrow. Are you with me? So uh, here, we, we're we gonna go into, so I'm then gonna say uh, PD, right? dot pd dot read csv so if we are reading an excel file you're going to say read excel if you are reading a csv file you say read csv you want to read html file json file but we're not going to go beyond excel and csv mostly we're going to be dealing with csv because this is a csv file so i say read csv and here you say path your data set your data set is d and I'm going to say A. Once I press tab, it's going to give me the name of that dot CSV, right? So I can I can then run this. I can look at the data set from here. I can just say uh, I can say I can call Tolufelo. It is a variable. That's the data set, right? You can see the data set has a lot of uh, null values, right? You can you can manipulate this data set. You can repeat it. You can uh, we're going to do all those things as we move along. That's, that's possibly we're going to work with pandas tomorrow, right? So those are some of the things that we're going to be we're going to be doing. So now I just I just use this. Just now I want to know it has already given us the dimension. As you can see, I say this thing has one thousand three hundred twenty-four rows. And three columns. This is the dimension. Right? This is the dimension.
Are you guys with me? That's a damn. Hello? Oh, sorry, I mistaken. Oh, yes, you are muted. I yeah, to, okay, I, sorry. I to to yeah, it was a mistake. So, as I was saying, right? As I was saying, uh, so here is what has happened. I forgot to record, but thankfully, I've been streaming on Facebook. So I'm just going to download the recording on Facebook, right? And I'm going to give it to you, but I, I, I presume you guys are recording as well. Right? Okay. Hello, are you guys, are you two recording? Yes. Okay, great. So if you want to check the dimension, look, if you want to check the dimension yourself, always take note that rows come first, followed by column. Now, you just say, follow fellow, dot shape. That's all. On it, you can see what it gives you. Right? Those are some of the things that we've done here. When I say, uh, where, when I say shape, rows come. That's why I say always to note that rows come first. Right? Remember, this is pandas that I'm using. But like I said earlier, right? Everything in data science in Python is based on NumPy. Everything is created. The foundation of everything is NumPy. Right? Okay. Now let's go into NumPy uh, operation. So there are different ways in which you can create NumPy. You can import NumPy, right? So let's go into NumPy operation. There are different ways in which you can create NumPy, right? You, we have already imported the NumPy, as you can see here. And for you to use NumPy, you've got to import it. And like I said, this is just an alias. You could decide to leave this out. If you leave it out, you're going to be using NumPy. You're going to be typing NumPy in full. So but for me to be shortened, and that is basically the convention that almost every Person uh, uses we just say as MP. That's why I said as you can create a variable, you can create a variable also as. There's no point in doing that. But when you import a library, you can import it as the alias, and you begin to use the alias, right? So, for instance, I can say uh, from matplotlib. If I want to, when we get to matplotlib, I can say from matplotlib import. Py plot, right? Import py plot as are you with me. Py. I'm going to be using py. Does it make sense? So, but for now, uh, just, just uh, leave leave that. I can run this. It's fine. So, for you to create, let's say I can create a numpy. I can create a data set, uh, a, a data, a numpy uh, array, and I say x for instance, equal, but take note, we are not creating a, an array. We are going to be using data set, but I'm giving you the foundations of NumPy. That's what we're doing. So that by the time we start doing these things, it doesn't look like a trick on you. So I can say x equal mp dot float, right, as a data set. I don't know why it doesn't give me float. So I can say float, right? Let me see. I want to know whether float has been taken up. I can say 1.2.4677. If I do this, oh, sorry, there were two points there. 4677. Okay, that float has been, it's no longer, it's, it's been duplicated as you can see. It's so duplicated in number two. So that's why it's giving us, so I think I'm going to use float underscore. If I do this, you can see that everything is fine, right? If I call X, just like we did, it's going to give us that value. If you want to know the value of X, you know how to do that. I can say type 
text you know, see numpy dot float as you can see right i can convert this to integer right you know how to do that i can say why to to convert this to integer i can say uh, let's say uh, to convert into integer so you can say why uh, uh, why equal right you just say mp mp dot int let me see okay i think it's int underscore int is also duplicated as you can see it's not there so dot int and i will say and i'll say uh x i'll pass x there because x is value right if i run this i can then call uh y right you see because i've converted it into integer look at what it gives me if I say type, right, y, going to say numpy dot int, right? What are the various ways that you can create numpy array? Remember the various ways, the various ways to create a numpy or to create numpy arrays. Right. Okay, go for it. Go for it, yes, sir. Uh, Yeah. Why is it giving us that um, the int that it's already it's already created? Have you used it before? I don't understand why it's giving us that error, sir. Which error is that? Now, before when you were when you wanted to convert to integer, and you said we have to put the type which put np uh, dot int. When you run it first time, there was an error which I did say there was an error before you put underscore. Why are, is it giving us that error, sir? I think I explained the reason why it's giving the, it wasn't an error, it was a warning. Okay. It was saying that that int as, or float has been deprecated. Deprecated means they have stopped using that. It's no longer in use anymore. Okay. okay. Are you with me? Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Okay, so one way in which you can create an array, a multidimensional array, uh, is a numpy. Remember, like I said, a numpy array is a multidimensional array. That it, this is used to be capital P. Right? A numpy, as I said, is a multidimensional array like data structure. So to create an M, a, a, a numpy array, use what you call np, that is numpy dot a range, array range, right? An array range. That's basically what that means. Uh, let me put this. There are two ways in which you can put. You can use star star, or you can use uh, this. At the beginning, and also uh, at the end, right? Uh, can I use star star at the beginning and star star at the end, or asterisk asterisk, or this at the beginning and this at the end? So, for instance, if I put this, control C. If I put this inside here, it will only turn bold when I run it. You can see that they, they, they looks the same, right? So. Those are two ways in which you can get an array, I mean, a board in your, in your markdown. So if I say create an A range, so if I say NP, or if I say, let's say I say array, right? And let's say I say MP, MP array equal A range, MP equal MP dot A range, right? A range. Right? And I say, I do this. It's only going to create 10 array for me. So if I run this, and I call, it's supposed to be NP array, not NMP. So I'm going to run it. Right? So if I run this and I call your MP array here, right? Look. 
right? You can see what it does, right? Did you see what it does? So it creates that A range for me, right? Now, you can come here, look at this, look at this. By default, you look at what I gave to you here. MP dot A range, we have start, we have stop, we have step. Start means where it should start from. Stop means where it should stop. Step means the number in which it should step. Like you want there to be space of two, two, right? But if you do not specify all those, it's only going to give you the stop. And it's going to start from zero. So here, I specify only 10. It's going to start from zero. It's going to stop at 10, right? Starting from zero, and stop at 10. When it gets to nine, it doesn't display the 10. That's what it means. Are you guys with me? So if I come here and I say, and I say, look at this again, I can say, this is going to give us the same thing. If I say, I'm just going to copy this. Uh, and I'm going to put it here. I'm going to say MP dot MPRE one, and I say zero. Start from zero, stop at ten. Run this, and I call this MPRE one. That makes sense to you. If I say look at here, and I I'm going to give us the same thing. I'm going to call it MPRE two, and I say start from zero. Start from zero, stop at 10, step by two. It's going to start, say, zero, two, four, six, eight. When it gets to 10, it will stop. It will not print it because we say stop at 10. When I do this, and if I run MP array two, did you see that? Now, most of the things that we have when you have your data set, most of the things that you have when you have your data set is a list. That list is combat or is converted into array. So let's say we want to convert, uh, I'm gonna make this a markdown. Then we convert, let's say converting, converting a list into an into a numpy array, into a, into a num, numpy array, right? So if I come here and say, say I say scores, equal, right? I say, this is a list, right? I say 30, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, as much as you like, right? And then I say, how do you convert this to an array? How do you convert this to an array? To convert this to an array, you can then create another variable. Let's say we say score, score array. Um, let me, let's just say we say score NP array, right? Equal very easy. You just say MP dot array. MP dot array. And then you pass the variables. You see scores. Remember all these values are there. Right? If I now call scores, call MP array, right? That's our MP array. It has been converted into MP array. Now, if I say type score n p array, look at what it says. It says numpy dot n b array. That's the type. What is the number of dimension that it has? What is the number of dimension that it has? If I say, if I say uh, uh, scores score this, and I say dot n d. This, it has only one dimension because this is only one dimension. It's only one. 
that you with me. You can only you can also look for the size, right? I can say you can, if you want to look for the size, you can say score. No, score this dot size. This is now. You look at it. That's it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? If you want to find the data type, you don't use the type. What do we use? What do we use? E type. I've just taught us this earlier. Right? If you do this, this is int what? 32. You can, you, we can print the unique item from this. It can, it can print the unique item from, from this. If you want to print the unique item, just say mp dot unique. And then you say score array. All of them are unique. Why? Because the each apply ap appears one one. If you want to reverse, if you want to reverse the array, if you want to reverse the array, you can you can reverse. You can say mp dot flip. You can see that's more or less like we are doing English. Flip. And then what do you want to flip? You say your score mp array. It's going to reverse. It's going to start from hundred, as you can see. If you want to sort, like we said, mp dot sort, and then you pass your sort. It's already sorted. Anyway, right? So you want to add to this. You want to add to this array. What do you do? If you want to add to this array. What do you do? Let's go for it. Go for it. Um, is it not, are you not going to use something like append? Now append, if you are appending, that is when you are appending two data sets together. Like I have, I have two data sets, Excel very big. And instead of me copying and pasting each other, they have the same column, the same heading. I'm just going to append or merge. Does that make sense? Okay. In NumPy, you just flip. So, want to add, I can just say MP and I'll say score MP array, and I'll say this, and I'll say, let's say I say 40, 85, right? And you do this, you could see that 40 and 85 as another day. Does it make sense? So. We have 285 there. Okay. Come again. I said we are having, oh, 285. After the clip. Yes. Here, so basically what we did here, right? Are you with me? Yes, sir. Is that we are we clipping. Append that uh, the fellow said was also right. Now, here we are taking away only 40 and 85. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Right, 40 up until 85. So here, we took away 40, we had another 40 to each. That's why we have three 40s here. Right? We never had 55. That's why we have 155. I mean 150. We never had 50. We never had 60. We never had 70. We never had 80. Right? Why it had it to 85? I don't know. 
Oh yes, it took it took eighty five from here because we we say up take from up to forty to eighty five. That's why we have eighty five. And then we had eighty five. Yeah, that makes sense. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So you can join two array. How do you join two array together? How do you how do you join two array together? So let me let's say I say score the array two. Give me the value that we should put in it. Give me the value. Equal, I'm just going to say equal MP dot array. I want to convert it into a, into a number array immediately. And I'm going to do this. Give me the value. Hello, guys. So just the value, please. 10. 10. 25. No, let's, let's just use the value that we don't have in there before. Let's say two. Okay. Let's say four. Let's say five. Let's say nine. Let's say uh, 10. Right. Uh, let's say ten. What else? Let's say seven. Let's say six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say one. Let's say what else? Let's say twelve. Right. I'm going to run this. To join the value together, you use np dot concatenate. And then you say score array, array, comma, and then you say score array two. If you are using pandas, you say pandas dot append or pandas dot match. But we'll get there. Right? If I run this, it says error, what error? Only integer scalar can be converted into uh what does it mean? What does it mean by integer scalar? Okay, I'm going to say, okay, let me just say 200. I'm going to say 400. I'm going to say 500. It seems we are using in 32. And this is int. So let me say 900. And say 105. I'm going to say 700. I'm going to say 600. I'm going to say 110. I just want to use the number and I say 120. Now let's try it again. What is it saying? That, there, shouldn't, there shouldn't be any error. Oh my, my, oh my, my. I must, I should have put this, sorry. It's supposed to be two because they are two dimensional array. Now, I think that's where the problem is. I think so, let's try it. Yeah. That's where the problem is. So even without putting these, all these that I did earlier, right? Yeah. So if I if I rerun this and I come here, yeah, you can see that that's where the problem is. So you can have, like I said, MP dot zeros. Right? If you say Make it, make it 10, but put zero. It's gonna give you 10 zeros. The same thing to one. The same thing to one, right? The same thing to one. Uh, we have what we call NP dot identity. That is, so uh, if you say, if you come here, let me come here. I wanna look at uh, uh, definition. Let's say NumPy dot identity. It's just going to give you, so if you come here, right, it says return the identity array. The array is a square array with ones on the main diagonal, right? And then zero on the other uh, diagonal. Diagonal like this. Look at the way my stuff is going, right? So it's just going to have one on the main diagonal. So if I come here and I say np dot identity, right? And I say make it five. You could see that it gives us one on the diagonal, 
right? One on uh, the diagonal, right? Line space, we also have line space. Line space is basically used more or less when you are working uh, with application that are using NumPy, uh, especially numerical application. Uh, you might want to create, you might want, to, there might be a, a certain situation where you want to create an array of numbers. So in many cases, you want the number, listen to this, you want the number to be evenly spaced. Look here, when I come here to give the line, uh, the line space, where, where is that? Here, at evenly spaced values between interval to array, uh, to array length, right? So basically, uh, you use line space. And it seems pretty forward, straightforward, more or less like the same thing as, a, as, the, as the A range, right? So if I say MP dot line space, right, line space, and I say here, yeah, start from 10, up at 100, step by five, the same thing but it's gonna give you that evenly space, right? If I do this, look. So it gives you uh, uh, stuff like, like that up until you get into, into 100, right? So we, we also have, uh, we also have what we call random. Or rand, random dot rand, mp dot random dot rand. Basically, what that does is that it creates an array of the given shape and populates it itself. So if I say mp dot random dot rand, and I say give me 10, it's going to create an array of 10, I mean, of 10 dimension. And then it will populate it itself. Let's go for it. Yes, I don't understand this line space. Sir. I mean, we from now you put 10 hundred and five. I mean, I think should will it be 10 uh between 10 to 100 and space five? Yes. It starts from 100, right? Are you with me? Yes, sir. It starts from 100, I mean, from 10. 10. Give a space of five, okay. and it stop at 100. 100, okay. What is it that you don't understand? Me? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering how we got those 10, 10, 2, 5, 5. Is this still referring to our array, or just a random number? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure I understand your question. What I'm saying is now we got 10, 32, 55, 75, uh, 70. Yes, 75. this is not, there, there's a lot there. It only prints five. One, okay. two, three, four, five. That's what it only prints. Okay. Okay. To print right? just five. It only shows five. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So yes. okay. if I let me do it, let me do it this way and say, uh, Line space array equal right. So if I run this, it's not going to give me that. So if I I then come here to say line space array, right? It shows that if I say line space array dot end beam, it gives us one, right? If I say the dot shape dot shape, you see, so five, that's basically, so here we have like 10 dot in the end, if it, uh, um, let me look for, I wanna look for, uh, I want to look for how I can actually uh, uh, 
I'm looking for how well I can reshape. I think it's reshape. So if I say line space array dot reshape, right? Let me say I say I don't know the number it has there. Let me say I see uh seven comma seven. It says cannot get a real size five into a shape seven comma seven. Okay. So if I say two comma three, still will not do that. So here I give a line space. Right. Let me do something to know where. Let's say I say ten, ten, and then we go to fifty. Right. We go to fifty. Let's say we go to fifty, and then let's say. I give this, let me run this, and let me run this. So it's give us 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? So which means it give us evenly space of 10, 10, 10, right? So if I then use 100 here, so we go to 100. And then here, I said here to step by five, by five step. That's why it's giving us that, right? So here, it give us 10. Here, it give us 32.5. What is that? That is a, that is a space of 22.5, right? Am I right? Yes, he's using 22.5. And then here, it gives us under 22.5, that's why it gives us 55, 77.5 and 100, right? So here we're going to 100, in between. Hello? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Remember a line space, as I explained here, where is it? Here's the line space. Here, it's an evenly spaced value between in cover. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we tell NumPy here that give us an evenly space up until 100. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So for us to get an evenly space of up until 100, this is what is going to give us that evenly space before we can stop at 100. Does that make sense? Now, there's a, there's a little bit of shift between these and Python. If we were to say Python, this will stop at 99, remember? But this line space will stop at 100, the last number that you give. So if I say here, 50, I did this. Look at when we run this. It automatically says, okay, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. We give us up to, up to 50, evenly spaced. Does that make sense? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please can I ask but, another question? But here, here I say give us hundred, yes. and we are only going to five. Give me five pieces. Yes. How do we get to five pieces, and they have to be evenly spaced? If I say six here, it means this thing is going to six from ten. 
Now look at this. You see that. 10, 28, 46, 64, 82, 100. What is the evenly space? 18 is the one that has been added to this. Because we only want five. We only want six. What are we going to space evenly for us to get seven? I mean, six, and we are going to 100. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So if I say, start from 10, stop at 100, but the number that you must give to me is eight. What are the even, evenly space that you are going to create before you can get to 100? And it must not be more than eight. So if I run this, now look at here. You see 10, 22.8, this, 25 point this, 30, 48 point this, those are the evenly spaced before it gets to 100. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other question? Yes. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you, I'm not sure whether it's a stupid question or not. I, no. Your question not, is stupid. <laughs> now, you, you may mention of when we're working uh, in Python, now when we're working in NumPy or when we're working in Panda, I wish, I mean, my understanding before this class is uh, Python comprises of NumPy, Panda, etc. Does that mean uh, NumPy is different from Python? I knew that you explained that it's a numerical Python, but the way you were saying, okay, uh, um, now we're, if it was in Python, if it is in uh, uh, NumPy, so does that mean they are different apart from the fact that you said it's a numerical Python? Okay, so basically this question means that you've not probably been listening to what I was saying, right? Yeah. Python is a programming language on its own. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. NumPy is a library that was created okay. on top of Python to handle some of the mathematical, statistical uh, calculation that Python can sort of handle, but it cannot handle them well. Wow. For instance, in Python, there's no array. We only have list. Are you with me? Yes, I got it. We only have list in Python. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Sorry for tracking us back. That's why NumPy was created to, to be able to convert list into array. Right? Yes. And over and above that, uh, Python, uh, uh, NumPy is very fast in operation, in performing operation. Right? It's very fast more compact than Python list. The basis of a NumPy is basically Python. And I said it earlier, I mean, it's basically Python list, the basis of a NumPy. And I also said it earlier that Python basically consumes less memory and it is, I mean, NumPy consumes less memory and it is convenient to use, right? And I said, every other data science library are built on top of NumPy. Pandas is built on top of NumPy. Matplotlib is built on, on top of Panda. Seaborn is built on top of Matplotlib, right? Plotly is built on top of Matplotlib. Like that and like that. And then there's is what we call SciPy or scikit-learn that upon which machine learning library are built. They are built both on top of all these things. So their foundation is NumPy, but the foundation of NumPy is Python. Does that make sense? Yes. If you go to the very first class that we had, I explain everything. Let me explain to you how I explain everything. In the class, I explain what we are going to be doing in week one, week two. I, I explain what we're going to be doing. 
I explain in week one, in week two, I explain what we're going to be doing week three and how we arrived there. I explain what we're going to be doing week four, week five, this is sci-fi, sci-fi, and I explain all this. Any question? Oh, guys, forgive me. I think I now realize why I finished this off low as a week, week 10, two. So I'm going to change it again. Just forgive me. Uh, I remember that week seven and eight is I'm supposed to use it for. So that's off lost this day. Okay, go for it to the fellow. I wanted to ask, and I was particularly interested when you were um, downloading that S, S TSV file. Um, I wanted to check in terms of the number of um, rows that you can have or columns. Does um, NumPy also have like limitations? Like you know, with Excel, there's a point where you get like. I can't hear you. Does NumPy have has limitations? Has, has limitations as to. Uh, how many, um, uh, how big your SC, SC, CSV file should be? There's no limitation. That's the one thing that makes Python to be different from Excel. That's that's one of the advantage of Python when it comes to data analysis and data science. Yes, because that's it's, the way I got, yeah, I had a problem. There's with no Excel limitation. Because... That's why Python oh, okay. is very, very, that's why Python is very, very accurate. Oh, uh, very, okay. very well, dangerous by a lot of people. Right, Python is basically used made for to handle big data, and you should you should know what big data is. Okay. Yeah. So there's no limitation. In fact, you can create more columns, and you can add it to your column, and you can create more rows. So now, like. Uh... Because, but anyway, maybe I should, I will, uh, as time goes, I will start um, uh, what you call um, asking those questions when like you are stuck in that um, um, combining maybe a number of, because like I said, you'd have a number of um, uh, TSV files, for example, and because of the limitation, then maybe you may need to combine them together. Uh, would you go through that? You can, you can combine. You can match CSV file together, but they must have the same column and the same, they are, they are, the names of those columns must be the same. Okay. If their names are not the same, it's going to create a lot of columns. Right? Okay. So you, yeah, can, think... you can combine CSV files together using Python. We can we can we can we can look at that. If you have CSV files that you want us to combine, you can bring them next week. But like I said, they must have the same number of columns in order for you to have accurate file, and they must have they, those columns must have the same heading. If you want to come, if 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 they were to be the same, otherwise they are going to have different columns. Does that make sense? Okay. Does that make sense? Bye. Yes, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, any other question? Okay. So if there's no other question, so as I said, uh, I'm sure you understand how we got to this, right? Yes. Now, I, I was explaining random rand int before uh, that question came. So you can create you can create a, a random uh, array of a given shape, right? A random array of a given shape to say, let's say you say mp dot random dot rand, and then if you say 10, that is, it must have only uh, one, uh, uh, one row, 10 columns. If you do this, you can see what it gives to you. That's a random array. This is basically how people generate data. It's one way that you can use to generate your own data. Are you with me? To use. So you can, let's say you want to create a, a, a file. So if I copy this, 
if I copy this, control C, and I put it here, and I say, uh, comma, generate an array of, I'm going to say, let's say, I don't want it to be too big. I'm going to say six, six uh, uh, rows and five blocks. As you can see, it's going to generate a random number. <laughs> Very easy kind of thing to do. Right, very easy kind of thing to uh, do, right? So there's a, there's another thing that you can do. Uh, you can you can create an array where you can have. Uh, let's say you do this. Let's say you want to return random integer. I'm going to copy this again, and here I can say. Create five twenty six, right? You can see. So it's going to generate an array. It's not going to be up. It's, go, it's not going to be more than twenty. You know what we did there, right? So up until it gets to that particular value, it's just random uh, array. So it's going to return random integer from low to Add, right you can another thing that you can do uh, you can do indexing you can you can do indexing your array i'm going to give you this to you as uh, as an assignment so when you are doing indexing array so let's say we have this array right let's say we have this array uh, i'm going to say uh, let's say we have this array uh, let me come here and I'm going to say uh, markdown. I'm going to say uh, indexing. Some of them I'll give you as an assignment and broadcasting. I know our time is gone, but I don't want to add this to tomorrow. Right? So if I say, let's say we say matrix, is a variable. I'm just saying variable matrix equal, let's say we say mp dot mp dot a range dot a range right and i say one comma seventeen that is you know what that means by now i do this a core matrix right it's going to give me up until that right now you know what index is already if i say give me the matrix of zero we did this in Python, remember, on the list. It's going to give us one, because remember, it starts from zero. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So if I say, give me the index of index 15, it's going to give me 16, right? Now, look at this. If I say, give me matrix index, Start from two, start from two and stop at seven. Right? Start from two is going to start from here. Right? And it's going to stop at seven. It's going to start from here and it's going to stop at seven. If I do this, if I come here to do this, you can see what happened. The column. Right? If I say matrix of this, and I say 12, what I'm saying is that start from 12 until the end. Start from 12 until the end, as you can see, right? You can, you can, so this is what I wanted to do earlier. I wanted to do this to multi or two dimensional array. So I say uh, matrix, Yes, go for it. So when we're looking at this part on, of arrays, they work more or less like lists because I remember with um, dictionaries, you had to use some form of a key or something to call it out. Oh, my, my. Cholo fellow, you guys have not been listening to what I'm saying. Uh, if you listen to one of the ex explanations that I make, I said the basis upon NumPy is what? Yeah. 
is least least in, oh yeah culture. does that make sense but now you see now when you apply something now it starts ringing a bell now mm. that i'm doing an example now i see exactly. what you did. yes so, but it's very very important to so this is how it works I'm so we must have least Okay, yeah. I'm first going to explain the the theory behind uh, and I'm going to start with the practical, which is what we're doing. Okay. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. So here we have we look at this, we have this matrix, we have matrix one to sixteen, right? But it's in one dimensional like this right hello yes sir yeah so it's a one dimensional if you look at this we have matrix is in one dimensional i'm just going to make this a map down i'm going to say indexing right two two dimensional array Right, two dimensional. Array. So our matrix, right? If I say matrix, you know that dot size sixteen, right? I want to make it into an Excel like array that will look like a data, a data, a data set. So I can say I'm now going to say matrix dot reshape. In shape because it's 16, I'll say four by four, right? That's what it gives me. Does that make sense? Are you with me? So if I then come here and I say matrix, remember earlier, before we reshape it, before we reshape, when I say matrix zero, what does it give me? It gives me one. one. I come here to say matrix of zero. Right? Okay, because let me say uh, matrix. I'm going to say matrix reshape. That's a new variable. Matrix reshape equal this. Right? So I'm going to, I'm not going to call matrix reshape. Right? If I now say matrix reshape of zero, see what it gives me. This is zero. Look at this. This is zero. This is one. This is two. This is three. If I say matrix of P, I'm supposed to put this. See what happened? Right? Now, look at this. If I say matrix, matrix reshape of zero, right? And two, for instance. Right? Now, you'll be confused. You'll be confused here, right? Look. This first one, where is this supposed to be true? But when you start the first one, when you want to take up until the next one, you don't count again from zero. Are you with me? So if I say, are you with me? I say matrix of P here, because here you can't column from row start counting from zero, from start counting from one. So if I say zero, then this is one, two. So it's going to count the whole of this. If I say of three, watch. Does that make sense? You see that it brings the whole of them, right? So basically, uh, if you look at this, now let's say, I'm not gonna call this, Gonna call this control C, gonna put this there. I'm gonna say 
look at this. I'm going to say one column P, and I'm going to say comma, and I'll say one column P again, for instance. This then is that row and row. Are you with me? That row and row. Right? And this is that column and column. Right? So if I do this, you see what happens. Right? So basically, you don't normally select these unless you are doing. So if you do here, let me copy these again and I stick into C and I do this and I say, let's say we say two, let me say two or four. And I say, you know what that means there? Eh? Let me put it in comment for you. And I'll say, okay, is start row. Start row to end row, comma, start column to end column. So if I say two or four, and I say one of two, right? Now, try two of two to four and two to four. So if I say two to four, yeah, and proceed, and we say two to four, and then we say two to four. Right? And here, if I say two until last and two until last. Excuse me. That's what it's going to select. Now use your role and uh, your 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 role, uh, your 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 column and row counting to do all this. We're not going to be doing this. This is uh, make me to say. I think it's petty to do all those things. You should do that when you are uh, uh, so. I, I think I've already done the broadcasting. That's where we see scores and I convert it into array. And one last thing that needs to be done is basically your uh, how to check documentation. How to check documentation. So if you want to check documentation, all you need to do is just to say F. When you say F, what do you want to check? Let's say you want to check line space. I say mp.line space. It's going to give you everything that you need. See, say F on function line space in line space module uh, 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 numpy. Line space start is going to give you an explanation, all the parameters, everything that you want. So you want to check F on PD pandas, because I'm not going to do this on panda. I say F on PD dot, let me say read CSV. Right? If you draw this, on read CSV on function read CSV in module pandas, blah, 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 blah. It gives you everything, explanation of everything that you need to know. I expect you to do some of these things. I also do it on many occasions. Please take time to read everything that you don't have, you don't understand one after the other. That's why I give you the help. So you can say F on NP, right? But a range to give you explanation on that A range, values are generated within blah, 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 blah. Everything that you've done, you can go and find F on, on them. Any question? Any question, guys? Uh, we spent the extra 25 minutes. It's, it's, it's worth it. Remember, especially considering our timeline and the fact that I said I'm not going to be available, I don't want to push anything. So, uh, I think by weekend you know how your week is going to be. So let's 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 finalize now. Do we meet sometimes during the week next week? Uh, for me it's fine. Next week is okay. If we, if we, Cholofello, what about you? If we're going to do it, it's going to be in the evening. 
Um, we can do it next week uh, in the evening. What time? I'm looking at nine to eleven around that period. Um, I think that's fine. But which okay. day in particular are you looking? Which day are you not going to be free? Let me come back with the day tomorrow because my week, uh, I always have, I also have classes. Some of them are in the mm -hmm. evening. So I wouldn't want to do two, two classes together. Otherwise, I'll also be exhausted, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, I've got to go to work, gonna come back, do one class. Most of the classes are five to seven in the evening and there's one seven to nine. So I'm gonna look at it so that I can rest in between classes. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, I'll come back to you tomorrow. So what we're going to do next week, I mean, during the week is week four, right? Mm -hmm. So we will do week five on, we will do week five next weekend, which means on the 10th. Oh. On the 10th. We are not going to have class on the 17th. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. Or, yes, we, we're not going to have class on the 17th. Does it make sense? So, all right. because I won't be available. But all subsequent right. week, we will then continue with week six. After week six, right, week seven and week eight will be for consultation. Are you with me? With week, which week? Week seven and week eight. Or it's consultation, so we can bring our own data sets and um, play yes. around it. Okay. Yes. But we we'll all look at it together during class time. Basically, it's going to be you are going to be doing the project. Okay. Right. Mm. So, if you have any project you want to do, let me know. If you don't, I will give you a project. But by the time we finish week five and six, you will have an understanding of. If you are doing any project, you know, that's why your class is special. Are you with me? Mm. If, if you are doing any project, you would have understood what type of project you are doing. Is it classification? Is it regression? By the time we finish with this. Oh, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Does that make sense? Mm. So I would have explained what machine learning uh, using classification is, what using regression is, do examples. You would have had an understanding of okay, this data set that I have, this is what I want to do with it. Mm -hmm. It's classification that I'm actually doing. Does that make sense? Right. Yes, sir. I think I'll just need to put up the dates um, correctly. Yes. So please. Class, yeah. Yes, please. Week five, we're going to be talking about data analysis. I mean, week four, which is what we're going to do next week. Tomorrow, I'm going to do pandas. I'm not going to do matplotlib and Seaborn. I'm going to record them because they are more. Does that make sense? And, the, and then um, a submission of the uh, exercise, when do you want it? I'll give you, I'll create a class for you today. So you want it I today? Will, yes, I'll create a class for you today. Later today. All right. Okay then. Um, if so, if we send it also early in the morning tomorrow, is it fine? It's fine. Okay. It's fine. No problem. Okay. Any other question? Okay. That concludes today. Uh, are you getting something? Is it making yeah. sense? <laughs> of course it is it's getting yeah no hard. it's it's getting to where we want to get where you want to get i told you <laughs> when we start python it's going to be boring but without python you would have you wouldn't understand this yeah without this you will not understand matplotlib and seaborn which okay. i'm going to record if i'm going to try as much as possible to record matplotlib and seaborn today without this you will not understand matplotlib and seaborn Without this, you will not understand data analysis. Without this, you will not even have an understanding of machine learning. Are you with me? Yeah. Without I this, wish, you cannot do TensorFlow. Take note. I wish I was attended this class earlier. <laughs> and and you remember when I started, it was very it was the most cheapest thing that I did for people. Uh, but doc, I sent a mail, but I was not chosen. <laughs> 
there were a lot of people. I don't yeah. do free stuff anymore now. <laughs> I sent a mail. I did not have the money Flabby. then, but I'll Fla sure to the fellow. Doctor. When I started this class, it was a giveaway. That was about three years ago. Is I it? started. I started free. Oh, okay, I should have joined three years ago. <laughs> later, <laughs> later, later, I started collecting. I used to collect the money in naira and in dollars and in rand. So because you are you are used to rand, I started collecting one thousand rand. Oh. Later, right, no. later, but to cut the story short, now yeah. I charge 20,000 Rand because I now realize you know that I still give you, I still favor you. Yes. If but you know, doctor, I know some things in the assignment that you were wanted at to go study further because I saw there something like that. Way, like, like I told you. Yeah, like I told you. <laughs> You've got, you have to. That's why mm, I said, yeah, no, I saw. That's why I said, ask questions. Do not come to class and ask questions. That's why yeah. I created the yeah. group. But all of you kept quiet on the group. <laughs> That's not how to learn. No, I saw, right? I saw this morning that, uh, yeah, I know, this thing, it's like, some of the things, like, we didn't do them, but I learned yes. in the process of I doing know, them. By the time, I, I hope I'm correct in my... Yes. Exercises. By the time you finish your PhD, you will have an understanding and you as a as a lecturer you'll be able to stand in front of your student and tell them this is what i want you to do go and do this go and do that there are quite a number of phd in tut i did their implementation for them and i didn't charge this moment because they get scholarship so i don't have uh, when you're doing phd in south africa i know some people don't get scholarship but i don't know like me i don't have a scholarship dog yes go and look for scholarship where, PhD, uh, in South, PhD in South Africa doesn't look at nationality. It is uh, you that don't know where to get scholarship. If you okay. don't know, speak to speak to Tulu Fellow. She knows. <laughs> Tulu she Fellow. Knows. Ask her. <laughs> NRF doesn't discriminate based on nationalities. NRF does. Um, they do. Yes, dog. And now the age no. limit. They said that there are scholars. Yes, that's the that's age limit. Thing. Usually, it's a problem. But when you are under the limit, it's a problem. If you are thirty-five, in South Africa, thirty-five and down. 35, mm -hmm. If you are thirty-five, they don't believe you should be doing your PhD again. Over and above, if you are above thirty-five, does that make sense? Yeah, under thirty-five, there's actually under, thirty-two is safer. Yeah, thirty-two, 32 going down. Exactly. Yeah, so but, after thirty-five. NRF will not sponsor you. They believe you are too old. Exactly. You, your, your, your mind is not going to be in studying again. But, some but of for PhD, before coming it's too to much. PhD. That's what they think. But, but there are some there are some PhD, there are some funding. Go and look for that. D A D W A D. It's from Germany. And they give oh, it, yeah. that give it to everybody in any country. Okay, I'll your supervisor just needs you. Go and look for Mandela Roads. Those don't discriminate and they don't usually do age. I think Mandela Road is 40. Some PhD wow. is 45. Remember, NRF is government's money. And government does not want to. So 35 is 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 is, is reasonable to be honest, because it's government's well, money. They said 32. Doc is 32. Maybe they've reduced it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they've maybe they no, I think they they want you to like to be done by 35 that's why maybe they say 32 like because exactly. most but it's like you said it's not all of them but yeah, yeah. There's, but there's, the there's, case, there's NRF freestanding there's a there's a scholarship called NRF freestanding freestanding is for anybody go to NRF website look for all those things go to your university's uh, uh postgraduate funding office Ask them what, don't just say, ah, they didn't do this. Go there. That's where they are. That's what, what they are for. Every university in South Africa, they have yeah. postgraduate funding office. Yeah. Every university. So go to UP, postgraduate funding office, ask them what are the opportunities that I have. They will show you. Then 
another thing is some of you, when you write proposal, you don't list, you don't read the uh, instructions and how they want the proposals to be written. They are very, those things are very, very key. They are very, very key. You see, when you are requesting for scholarship, for funding, you have to hype yourself is a must. There's nothing like humility. Are you, am I right, uh, to the fellow? Yeah. There's, there's nothing like humility. You see all these, uh, is all, you, what you have not done, you have to say you have done it. Sell yourself. Are you with me? Sell yourself. The, even what your PhD is not going to achieve, say you are going to achieve it. When you get the money, you fine tune your proposal. <laughs> Those are some of the tricks okay. because look, the system everywhere, the system across the globe does not want people who speak the truth. That's the truth. That's a bitter reality. But that's so unethical. It's unethical, but they don't want you to speak the truth because you've got to hype yourself. I'm telling you, you've got to hype yourself. If you don't hype yourself, you won't get what they want to give to you because what they want to give to you, you don't have. Does that make sense? Yeah. The only way you are going to be unethical is when you are lying about, about uh, publications. You can't lie about publications. Yeah, those are unknown. You can't because they will verify that. But you have to, you can lie about promise. Nothing wrong. You promise, and when you get the money, you say, ah, I can't make this promise. So I'm, I'm modifying. That's why you can modify your proposal. That's why you can change your proposal. So it's very, very important. I mean, as at 20, 2019, in fact, as at 2018, when RAND still has huge value, some PhD students that are assist at TUT to write their machine learning model, I charge 40,000 RAND. Wow. That was 2018. If you bring then, your PhD, huh? Doctor, like, I wanted to check, because also, yeah, your PhD is, do you, and you are allowed to get like a data analyst? What yes, you are allowed. You are allowed. There's nothing wrong with that. As a as a PhD yeah. student, you are a researcher, right? Yeah. And this is yeah. what many people don't don't realize, don't understand, and many people think it's wrong. And let me tell yeah, you it's now, not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. as a PhD student, you are a researcher. You are not a software developer. Mm -hmm. Having mm -hmm. and understand mm -hmm. whether you are in computer science or information systems or information technology or, uh, or informatics or whatever programming area of uh, computer science that you may be, as a PhD student, you are a researcher. You are not a programmer. You are not required to know how to write program source code. You are free to give to outsource the programming part outside to people while you are conducting the research. Your so job I is can to conduct research. So I can resign from this class? <laughs> you can, you can, if you want to, but just make sure you complete my payment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But I think I also know. it's opening. But remember, it's opening, it gives you it's opening my mind, my mind exactly. to what options do I have end. available. That because at the end of why. the day, I need that to conclude why, and I can't do why. whatever it is that I'm getting as a product. I need to question it as a researcher. So I think exactly. That's that is why the government or the scholarship body gives you money to conduct the research. But the problem is you want to spend, you believe that money is for you alone. Yeah. Are you with me? Yes. Uh, you believe the money, the money they give to you. Remember, in your money, in the money, you have to budget on how you do some of those things, on how you spend the money. They realize that okay, budget is reasonable. They give it to you. You are supposed to outsource the programming aspect. Mm -hmm. You don't want to outsource, or you come to me and I said I'm going to collect sixty thousand. You say ah, 
Hey, Dr. Sam is too, so he's too, hey, that guy. Well, now you collect 350,000, you, you forgot that I know. Even if you don't get funding, that is what is in my brain, that you get funding. And the, the cheap funding that you can get in a year at this time is about 200,000 for a PhD. That's the lowest. I now say, <laughs> which means for three years they will fund you, they will give you 200,000 three years. That means you are going to collect 600,000 rand. I now want to charge you 60,000, but when I want to give me 20,000, because inside of that money, you want to buy a car. You ah. are here. <laughs> I'm just saying, not you personally, I'm giving an example. <laughs> I'm giving an example. So inside of that money, you want to buy a car. Some people want to pay off their loan, the house loan that they've collected. You, you get what I mean? You don't want to use the money for the purpose for which they ask you to use it. You want to have the money. Yeah, no, I see. I, I, I think for uh, programming, like... That's why. But, so yeah. there's a particular department. Mm -hmm. They called me for a meeting for a project consultation and said, yeah, this student is doing this. They want me to supervise them in TUT. They want me to, for privacy purposes, the reason why I'm not mentioning because this, this thing is streamed live. You know what I mean? You can stop why I'm not mentioning. This is why I'm not mentioning the, the name of the department. They called me. I sat down. I acted as a school supervisor. And then after that, I, I said, if I'm going to do this, I look at the, everybody's proposal, the data set. Some don't have data set. I we generated the data set for them based on what we have, based on the, the literature review. And as, as at that time, the cheapest money that I charged was 40,000. Because I know how much they collected. They said, ah, Dr. Sam, I said, okay, be honest with me. How much did the general, how much did the general give you? Give you rather. It was at that point there, and they, some of them would have forgotten that I've been, uh, I, I'm also in this system. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I am also in this system. I'm not only, I was, I was a postdoc, I was a lecturer for 13 years in the system, and I was a supervisor. So when you come to say, I'm a PhD student, I'm doing this project, I'm doing this, I know how much is in your pocket. So, okay, just give me my own day. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. It's not a crime. It is not unethical to outsource your work out in case you guys don't know. They don't expect you to know how to write programs. But if you know how to write programs, it's going to elevate you, especially if you continue in academic line. It's going to even make your student to see, ah, Dr. Dr. Tlad, Dr. Tulufelo, that woman is brilliant. Yo, the way he give us this thing. And then it also going to explain what drives students to you when it comes to supervising, 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 uh, supervision. And remember, the higher the number of students you produce at graduation, that also contributes to how much you also earn in terms of bonus and how you are going to go higher the rank in terms of promotion. These are some of the things that you don't know. So you have to look at your supervision production, your, 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 your research article production, and your, your supervision, your research article, uh, your, your supervision determines the number of your research article because you are not necessarily the one writing the paper. Your students are writing them. You are just guiding them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, that's the motivation I, that I have for you guys today. I, I wish I know all this from the beginning, I mean. Yeah, that's why before you are before you go for PhD, there are some programs. I don't know if you know about it, to the fellow. There are all these PhD uh, South Africa PhD conference every year organized by NRF. Are they still doing it? I don't know. No, I don't know about it, but I think that was a good thing to get into because even things like managing your time, what you need, like it's yeah, it's also overwhelming and at, at yeah. times like I'm actually I'm actually planning of organizing such conference next year, but funding is a challenge for me for now. Because those are some of the things that people don't know before they go into PhD and it becomes a challenge to them.
Yeah. Yeah, okay. no, that's, that's so thoughtful, but thank you so much for today's lesson. Yeah, have a good one. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow, uh, 4 p.m. South African time. Okay. All right. There's consultation, right? <sighs> <laughs> put it on put it on put it on the group, the group. okay all right yeah. thank you okay all right thank you doctor all the best have a good weekend let's go and watch soccer bye. Yes, <laughs> bye. <laughs> with this war ah uh, no soccer for now thank you <laughs> don't don't over don't over work i'm telling you from experience you oh, will shit. break down <laughs> time right. to relax what yeah. soccer yeah, true. go and go and meet with your friends <laughs> i don't drink alcohol but if you yeah. drink alcohol just take one or two glass of, of of wine or one bottle of beer go back home relax if you don't get it leave it and throw away yourself you know just do some other thing and but i need to watch this friends. match we need to beat us now don't worry doc we are beating you today <laughs> so come back to <laughs> friends Otherwise, if you keep doing it, keep doing it, you don't get it and you still break down. It's yes. not good. Yes. Yeah, true. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. All right, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh -huh.